Hello, everybody. Uh, it's a Thursday night, and uh, I'm still at my studio, and then uh, I'm doing something special today. Not, not very special, but I want to talk to you. Uh, while uh, I'm, I'm hoping that more people would, would come in, I, 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 uh, let me tell you what's going to happen today. First of all, I, I'm going to do this in English this time. I promised uh, some of my subscribers that uh, I'm going to do more uh, content, create more content in English. Uh, I think most of the people in Hong Kong should have no problem understand my, my lousy English. I think uh, in case if there is anything like really difficult, really complicated, I might eventually speak in uh, Cantonese, but in general, I, I'm going to do today's live in, in English. I think that is going to benefit more people uh, because uh, uh, what, what, what I want to do today is related to something, uh, I, I think it, it does have more concern to the English speaking community. Uh, I'm not saying that I, 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 I yeah, for, for whatever reason, I just want to do this in English. The reason being that, uh, like, like I, I've wrote that down in the description, that uh, I recently came across uh, an advertisement on Facebook, which was uh, an advertisement uh, of a product, uh, which is uh, basically a light tent, intended for uh, product shots, you know. Uh, recently, I've been, we have been getting a lot of inquiries for e-commerce, like white background, simple stuff, and uh, yeah, we, we're shooting quite a number of them at the same time. But well, at the same time that I know a lot of people, they are using these light tents. Like, uh, I have one here, as you can see. We have one here, which is uh, for today's demo purposes. Now, my intention today is not to uh, uh, say if this thing is uh, good or bad. Every single piece of equipment got their own constraint. They could do something, and they couldn't do something. Like, uh, like the light tent that you are seeing here. Th this is a full deal, which I have seen this product on online, uh, on Kickstarter a few years back then. Uh, they, uh, uh, I think it's a really cool product. Just that myself, as a professional photographer, I, I never use one. Uh, because I never need to use one. I never got the need of using one. So uh, this folio was, I, I borrowed this, this uh, folio from my friend, uh, Agent Horn, the Dr. Horn. Thank you very much, first of all. Um, the reason that I picked, uh, b borrowed one of these back into my studio is that I want to do a demo, which I have not done before. I have never used anything like this before. And, uh, but as a professional photographer, just by looking at this product, I know the constraint that I'm going to have already. Because I know what's going to happen when I turn on the light in this device and what is going to happen if I put a certain type of product on into the, this tent that's why I, I want to give it a try. Even though I, I, I don't have any rehearsal, I didn't test it out at all, just that uh, Dr. Hong uh, tried to explain, explain to me what he does with this, this device and how he's using it and in what occasion is he using it. So that's all I know about it. Now, the first thing that I want to do now is to show you something which is, uh, I, I don't even know if I still remember the name. Hold on, because I, 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 I got the advertisement of this product. Let's see if I have it with me on my computer. No, it's probably on my phone. So uh, let me try to look that up first. It's uh, like 10, and in the advertisement, there is a photo which is, uh, I, I'm stunned by it, and I, 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 I really don't know how, how on earth is it possible 
to create such an advertisement because I, I think it is not ethical to, 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 to do this. Hold on. Let me try to show you the photo. Give me one second. I don't even know how to airdrop that to, to myself. My God. Okay, let me email that to myself so that I can show that on the screen. Okay. Now, though, though, I'm, not, though I'm saying that I, I'm not complaining about these products, I'm not saying that I, I, I don't think these products would work, but just that I was kind of inspired by this advertisement. That's why I really want to show you what this advertisement is. Hold on, the email is not coming through. Bear with me because uh, I, I didn't have a lot of preparation for this uh, demonstration. Hold on. Okay, here we go. And this, maybe. And then I'll email that to myself. All right. Okay. I just send it again, see if I got it. Okay, I got it. Here you go. Oh, I need some time to download it. But uh, bear with me. It worth the time. I posted the, uh, uh, I created a post on Facebook a few days ago, totally because of the, this advertisement. And I actually, I used the photo uh, on, on this, uh, on this, uh, in this advertisement and showed it to my friends on Facebook saying that, hey, does anyone got something like this? Okay, this is the advertisement. Vlas uh, Hiri, I think that is how, 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 how the name goes. Vlas Hiri, okay. And uh, this is the advertisement. Uh, basically the same device like what you are seeing here uh, in, with that, that, that device. The same idea, and uh, within this advertisement, he, they, they put a bottle, a blue bottle, probably photoshopped, probably it was not blue. They put a bottle there, and then they, they were showing that you can use an iPhone to take a picture like this, which, as a professional photographer, we know that this is impossible. There is no way that you can get that particular picture within this particular light box in this particular setup. There is no way that you can get that photo. Uh, a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, you are not going to get that light strap, that highlight refraction on the left, uh, actually on the right of the bottle, but on the left hand side of the screen. That, that refraction on, on, on the left, impossible. Secondly, the phone, the, the angle, the, the, the way that he's hang, hang, hang holding the phone is a little bit too high, that you are not going to get that perspective. You're not going to get that photo, no. It is impossible. And uh, yeah, and I think that is, uh, I, I will not say that is a scam, but it's cheating for sure. A lot of Photoshop work, putting in a, 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 another photo, photo, Photoshopped it in, both inside the Light 10 and inside the iPhone. That's why I think it's fake. And uh, I am not very happy with that. And that's why here we are. We are going to do a demonstration on uh, using one of these Light 10. So here we go. Uh, as you can see, we have a Light 10 here. Uh, one of the very important reasons why that I don't use a light tan is that uh, most of these, these light tans, when you, when you buy it, uh, they come with continuous light. And of course, there are like other devices out there like tans. Let me show you one of them. Hold on for a second. I was looking into my arsenal and uh, I, I found this in my arsenal. <laughs> one of these light tans, basically the same idea. Uh, a big light tan, which you can put products inside, okay? And uh, you can shoot. 
but then you need to lit it up yourself because it doesn't come with light. You need to use your own light to do it, which is fine, totally fine. Particularly, I, I have lights, I do have lights, and I use flashes. Uh, so I think I can use it if I need to, but I don't. I, I didn't brought this device. My friend gave it to me. He, he thought that I'm a professional photographer, so I probably need these. The, the, the joke is that I, I don't need, I, I never, I have never used any of these because there are constraints with these equipment. So that's why here we are. I, I, I want to share with you uh, uh, the, the problems that we have when we are using these products. Uh, give me one second so that I can uh, take a look and see if uh, there is any comments or reactions uh, 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 that we have that I need to... Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, so let's look at this thing. Let me try to uh, lead it up first. Okay, now first of all, I, I, I'm not going to... It's dimmable, that's a good thing. I just like turn it up just a little bit so that you can take a look at what's happening inside. Uh, basically, there are three LED strips up here, okay, running along the top cover of this thing. They are dimmable, but they are not movable. You can't change its shape. You can't change its color. Probably you don't need to, you never need to, particularly for, for this purpose if you are only shooting like white background products. So what's going to happen if we use uh, a light tan like this and, and shoot a product? Let me pick something like simpler. Hold on. I just randomly grab, okay, these two. Okay, I, I have some random products around me that I want to put inside and let's see, okay. Here I have a, a, a can of paint, okay, a, a spray paint can, okay. So let me show you what's inside. That's camera number three, okay. That's the spray can, okay. Let's take a photo. Now let's go into Capture One, take a look at uh, the, the setup. Here I'm at ISO 100. F11, and uh, uh, the shutter speed is one-fifth of a second, okay? One-fifth of a second, Ooh, wait a minute, what do you mean? Yes, it is one-fifth of a second. Uh, the, the, the reason being that normally when we are shooting products, uh, well, not normally, but because I, I want a uh, deeper depth of view, I want to see the whole product uh, clearly. Uh, that's why I close down the aperture to 11. That, that is like a normal practice for, for things that I want to be sharp, like, like from top to bot bottom, uh, the whole thing. Uh, sometimes I even go to F16 or even like F22 in, in very rare cases. But uh, in this case, I'll, I'll uh, stick with F11. And because we are using continuous light and the light is not very bright, so let's Take one test shot and see what we are going to get. Probably is out of the frame because I, I didn't even look at the composition. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Let's take a look and see if I can um, uh, position it even better. Okay, hold on, let's look into the live view and move it a little bit to the right, even more. Okay, okay, I think that's it. Uh, the focus is on the wordings at the front. So let's take another shot. I think we should get a pretty decent shot. Here it is, okay. It's a pretty nice, nice shot, I would say, for a white background product shot. You don't need a lot of stuff to make it work. I, I think it's okay, but actually it is not. If it is for my jobs, for my clients, I, I'm not going to do this. Let me tell you what I see, and uh, if I will have to tackle it, what, what will I be doing? Uh, first of all, when we talk about white background, there are at least 
at least three types of white background photos when we talk about white background photos. Yes, there are three types of white. What do I mean by three types of white? First of all, uh, in, in, uh, on, on your computer, white, the perfect white, is RGB value 255, 255, 255. Okay, let's look at the RGB value here. Uh, up here, you can see that there are RGB and then uh, uh, straight out, which is the luminosity, okay, is around 230. So that is not perfect white, which is fine for a lot of purposes. That's why that is the second type of white, which is apparently, it looks like it's white. Though it is not scientifically, uh, in terms of uh, uh, RGB on your computer, not the perfect 255, 255, 255 white, but it is still white, okay? So this is the second type. And there is a third type, which is even more tricky, which is we, we want the background to be 255 RGB, but then we want to keep the shadow, okay? Which is kind of tricky sometimes. Uh, for, for a can like this, you, you don't need to keep the, the shadow because practically there is no shadow because it's just a, like a can, okay, just a tube. You won't see any shadow, but if it is something else with shape, like, like I don't know, maybe this one, is a torch that I use, okay, I just put it here, see if it stands, okay, it's, it does stand, okay, take another shot, okay. You will see that down here, you will see some shadow, okay? You will, okay? Uh, to, to keep it realistic, sometimes we want to keep the shadow. We don't want it to be like a background removed white. I, I work with a lot of like big brands, uh, uh, like big international department stores that they are shooting all their products in the same spec. They, they want to keep the shadow. The reason being that they want to make sure that the, the product looks real, is not like just a cut out. No, they don't want it. So that's why they want to keep the shadow. So there are at least three types of white background photos, like a, the perfect white, an off-white, apparently it still looks white, uh, and then uh, with shadow and without shadow. Okay, so th there are a few types of them. So. For people who are doing e-commerce, I know a lot of people who are buying these products are for e-commerce purposes because they want to shoot their own products so that they can put it online and because they don't want to hire a, a photographer, which is totally fine, totally, okay? And I do think that sometimes these products are going to uh, so solve their problems. So uh, I think they, they are still, uh, still worth a in an investment for them if that is what they want, okay? But let's go back to the photo of the can, okay? Here, as a professional photographer, I think we are running into some problem. The major problem being this. We are pretty lucky here that we are still seeing the edge of the can here. But if we really want a perfect white white background, perfect white, white background. Then we will have to boost the exposure up, okay? Probably for another nearly a stop. Okay, let's try. For an other stop, okay, like here, okay? Let's try, let's see what would happen. I'm sorry, I need to replace it with the can first. Okay, and I should check the focus again for this purpose, though it's not centered, but uh, let's take a shot. Take a look at it. Now the background is almost, now almost 255. Okay, let's go like another one third. Okay, let's see. Another shot, it's better now. Okay, it's 255. Okay, just made it, 255, perfect. But then when you look at this, you can't see the edge of the can clearly anymore, okay? Yeah, you can still guess where it is, but uh, for, for situations like this, uh, I don't think that is a uh, uh, very good presentation of the product. So 
one of the limitations of, of using a, 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 this setup without knowing what to do, you will get results like this, okay? You want the background to be perfectly white, but then you are losing out the edge details. So what shall we do? Now, one of the things that you can do is uh, normally we'll do this. Hold on, give me one second. Let me go grab some other props. Because today, uh, uh, one of my, my intentions was not only to tell you how, this pro uh, how, how that advertisement was basically, a, uh, it was cheating, okay? First of all, to be honest with you, they, they were cheating. But at the same time, I want to tell you what can you get from this product. And they are good. I mean, in terms of uh, if that is what you want, you can still use this product. Okay, so here you go with my trick. So here's my trick. What you should be doing is using some of these uh, black cards, okay? What are these black cards for? We are trying to provide a certain surface for the product itself to reflect so that we will see black instead of white. Let me show you, okay? Let me show you what I do, okay? Now, I'm going to position this black card back here, okay? Because the light tank is so small, I need to find a way to put it back there, and I'll look into the viewfinder, and I'm seeing a bit of the black card. So let's try this, move it out a little bit so that I'm not seeing the black card anymore, okay? So now you, you know what, what I have done, right? Okay, so let's take a shot and let's see what would happen. Now this time, we are getting another shot. Both sides, on this side, you are seeing that white leaking in so that you, you, you can hardly see the edge of the can. Yes, I, you can, but no, that is not a very good choice. But on this side, you can actually see the edge of, of the white can, okay? You can see it now, much clearer, okay? Though, actually, there should be more, okay? There should be more. Let, let me show you what I mean by that, okay? This time, I, I, I want to put another black card behind it. Let me show you, okay? I'm going to place another black card behind the product so that you actually see the edge of it. And let's come back to capture one and take another shot. Okay, now you see, here is the edge. Can you see that? This is the edge, not this one. This is the edge of the product. But at least by placing the first black card, we are seeing more of the edge. Because light is being refracted, light is being refracted by the can, which is the background. The background is white, right? So when the can is so smooth and reflective, you can actually look into the can and then reflect the background back there. That's why by placing a black card right beside the can, you can actually uh, minimize the white reflection. By doing that, you are going to see the edge of the product, okay? Let's try to do it in an even more professional way. Now, when I say this is a more professional way, I'm not saying that you should do it or not doing it, but uh, normally, if we know that we, are go we, we need a white background, like the total white background shot, what I will do is that I will place it here, like really close in the background, really close in the background. Let's look into the viewfinder and see if that is what we get. Okay, almost, almost. As a demonstration, I think that is good enough. Okay, let's take a look. Let's take another shot. Now, this is probably what I will be doing if I have to take a shot, which I know that I need to do a cutout, 
okay, I'm going to remove the background. If I know that I'm going to remove the background, probably I'll do something like this. Now, can you try to compare this to this and to this? Okay, let me show you that edge. Can you see the difference of these three edges? This one, you, are, you, you barely see it. At least you see this, but not this one. Okay, this is the actual edge of the can, but now it's eaten in, okay? This one, just to show you where the edge is by putting a back background out there, of course, you, you, you won't take this shot. You won't use this shot, okay? Because that is not the purpose. But for this one, look at the edge. It's perfect. We have a white background, which is 255. Can you see up there? 255. And then the product, we can still see the shape of it. We can see the edge of it. That is the way of doing this, okay? A perfect white background, but still you can see the white product. That is one of the, I think that is one of the biggest problem that people are facing when they are using these product at home or, or for their business, where they, they don't know how to handle white products because that is what's going to happen, right? And within those advertisements, they, they are also selling you that you can use an iPhone and, and you are going to get a, a good result. Yes, maybe, particularly when your product is not white, particularly when your product is not refractive. If it is some uh, piece of wood, it will be great. But for anything looking more, I don't know, just something like this, it's not a, like a really expensive product. You just need a white background shot. But as long as there is anything refractive, you are going to get problems, okay? That is one thing that I want to talk about. The other thing that I want to talk about now is, let's go back to this shot. Let's go back to this shot. Uh, I don't know what you think, but to me, as a professional photographer, I'm seeing some other problems, which is down here. What is this? Okay, and how about this? What are these things? How about this? What, what are they? Okay, this one, I know. This is my black card, okay? Let's go back to this, okay? When the black card is not there, you don't see this. So what are these things? Okay, let me tell you what they are, okay? Let me show you another angle first, okay? Let me dim it down so that I can show you more clearly. Those black patches are actually this area, the front, and also there are two holes back here. Okay, can you see? There is a hole here and then another hole on the other side. Well, you, if you have something which is refractive in, inside this light tan, or actually anywhere, it is going to reflect everything. So using light tans like this, you are going to run into minor problems like this, which can easily be fixed, okay? Just put another piece of white paper there, maybe. It would help, but it would not fix. The problem is, if I tr try to go and grab a piece of white A4 paper, that white is probably not the same white that these white background is. And when you see different colors, you're going to see that. Now, in this photo, I don't know if you can see it. Let's go back to this. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see. Look at here. Can you see that there is some, some, uh, shade, some shade of yellow here? Okay, while it is more white here. Okay, you are going to have different white if you are putting something else into it. So, uh, Putting another piece of white paper might help, but eventually it might also cause you some other problems. So you need to be very careful when you are doing that. Okay, so that is the second problem that we have when we are using products like these. Okay, now let's move on. Let's take away these two small black parts. Okay, and uh, let's try to put something else in it. Uh, how about, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, 
that was my intention of shooting one of these perfume bottles. Okay, hold on, let me show you what's on set. Now, what's on set is a perfume bottle. Simple, okay. Let's put it at the center. Let's look into the viewfinder and make sure that we are in focus and that the product is at the center of the framing. Almost there. Okay. Good. Okay, I think we're there. Let's take a shot and see what are we going to get. Okay. Now here's the shot. Uh, we, we run into a few problems, I think. First of all, what is this? What is this? Tell me. And of course, for experienced photographers, not necessarily experienced, if you have played with products like this, you will know what that is. That is actually the front of the, uh, uh, of the light box. Let me show you. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me show you in live view. It would make it easier. Okay. This is the live view. Let me turn it back to the normal position, hold on. Uh, where is it? Uh, live view enabled. I'm so sorry, I've forgotten where it is. I couldn't find it. Here, it should be here. Okay, orientation, yeah, there you go. It should be 270, I think, yes, there you go. This is a live view, okay? This is your live view, okay, now, as you might be able to see my hand here. Okay, you can see my hand. Now, when I put my finger here, can you see the reflection of my finger, my hand? Okay. Uh, now, I'm moving my hand towards the camera, to the edge of the light tan. This is the edge of the light tan, okay. This is what is being reflected on the perfume bottle. And uh, it's really difficult to control. Let's look at this angle. It's really difficult to control. Like here, can you see that the paper is bouncing up because of, uh, it's not even a piece of paper, it's a piece of plastic. Uh, it's, uh, it's not elastic, but just that it, it bends, okay? And it keeps trying to go up. So that's why it goes up like this, and that's why you are seeing like some curves inside there. You see these curves. Uh, they, they are fixable, of course. You use whatever method, they are fixable. But make sure that you don't use uh, like black gaffer tape and tape it here because you're going to see it in, in the refraction, right? So that is another problem. If you want to get a shot of something this refractive, you are actually, be because now, first of all, the camera is like at this level. Actually, it is a little bit higher, at least higher than, than the bottom of, of the perfume bottle. When, it, when it's up here, the, the, light, the, the lens is actually like looking downward here instead of looking straight. So that's why when you look at here, it is going to reflect down here. That's why you are seeing the table itself, the light tan itself. So that's why this problem is almost unsolvable if you are shooting a product like this. So I think if you are shooting something like really refractive, uh, these light tans are, are going to create problems at the same time. Though if you are okay with, with the, the result that you are getting, you, you, you'll be fine. But then that's why you will never be able to get, hold on, and that's why you will never be able to get this shot. No, never. You will never be able to get this shot because you see, if the camera is up here or even lower, like here, when you go inside, you are not going to be able to get a refraction like this because first of all, you, you don't have like a rectangular strip light here 
to create this reflection on, on it. The second thing is when you're shooting up here, you are going to reflect the, the floor, the light tan, the front of the light tan. You will never be able to get this shot. That's why I was angry. Well, now I want to clarify once again. I'm angry with the advertisement. I'm not angry with these products. I'm not angry with people buying these products because when they use these products, they are actually taking, well, they, 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 they do the job of photographers. They think that they can do it. They want to do it themselves. And uh, they, they are not paying out for any other photographer. And, and I think that's fine, totally fine. This is how this business work world is operating. If you can't afford like a few hundred bucks for a shot, for a professional shot, and you are happy with the result of a product like this, and you know how to use it to get the best result you could with these equipments, I think that's totally fair, okay? You can go for it. But I am very angry with a company selling product like this coming up with an advertisement which they are using a shot probably by a professional photographer which they are trying to get a job which should originally be taken by a professional photographer. If you are a e-commerce uh, uh, shop or a shop owner that you need shots like this, I encourage you to get one of these products and try to shoot these photos by yourself or by your staff and try to get the best result you could. It will be fine, totally, okay? But just don't ever, don't ever think that you will be able to get a, like a truly professional result. Let me show you a, a photo, which uh, I'm not sure if I should be showing it, but I think it's worth doing this, okay? I want to show you a raw photo, which I, I took for my client, okay? Hold on, I, I want to hide things that you shouldn't be seeing first, because, uh, yeah, I know that they, they, they're selling this already, so we should be fine. Okay, maybe maybe something like this. Okay, hold on. Well, how about how about just showing you one photo? I, I think that 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 would be good enough. Okay, hold on. Just show you this photo. It's a raw photo. No retouch. Down here you can see it's a IIQ, which means it's a raw file from phase one. Okay, no retouch. White background, 255, 255, all around. You can see the edge of the whole watch clearly. Down here, actually, it is even like dimmer. It's a little bit like grayed out. You can see the definition of the side of the watch perfectly. No problem, okay? And that is a professional pack shot, okay? Which looks simple, okay? We, we, we took a shot of a watch with no shadow down here. You don't even have shadow down here with perfect texture showing all the details, okay, of these metal links, okay? And you are seeing all the details of the movements back here without light leaking in on the sides or up here. It's perfect. You're not going to see light crazy light leaking in because you know it's difficult to shoot shoot something silvery or silver in color silver is not a color but you know what i mean okay with a white background okay you you, you can look at the adjustment there is nothing okay okay i i pull down the highlight a little bit i can reset it it's still fine okay this is a raw photo from a professional photographer if you need 
a good e-commerce photo, white background, uh, I, I need to say that you are not going to get it from uh, 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 light tents like this. Maybe you could, but you need, you, you need a lot to, of work to make it work. This light tent is not going to do any magic, and uh, you are not going to get a, the perfect result right out of the box. Yes, you can get an okay result like, uh, like this one. I think it's okay, honestly. Depending on what you want, I, I think this is okay. Just that if I am not familiar with this bottle of perfume, I might question whether the, the bottle is black or is that a pattern printed at the bottom of the bottle or, or what? I'm not sure, okay? If I don't know about the, this brand. Uh, if you want it to be like totally black at the front, these light tents are not going to help you to create that. You will need some other way to do it, okay? That is some of the problems that you are going to face when you are shooting with these light tents, okay? Another problem, some other problem that, that you, you are going to run into a lot of problems when you're using these light tents. Like I said, you're using continuous light, right? The good thing about these uh, products nowadays are they are running on LED and you can control the, the power of light in it, which is pretty handy. But at the same time, because it is continuous light, meaning that if you have other light, source, uh, other light sources around, and if these other light sources, let's say window light, are bright enough, then you are going to run into problems like uh, you are going to see other refractions and light sources in your shot. Okay, now I, I want to try turning on all the lights in my, in my studio so that you know what is it like. Okay, now I'm, I turned it on some of the, the lights in my studio and let's take a shot. And to demonst for demonstration purposes, let me dim down the light hand a little bit and try to get a correctly exposed photo, okay? I know the white balance is looking strange uh, in the live, live video, but uh, bear with me for uh, a few more moments. Okay. All right, almost there. I think we're good. Maybe, okay, let, let me show you the photo first. Okay, I got this and uh, it's F11 and 1.3 seconds. Okay, the shutter speed is 1.3 seconds. Uh, let's compare this to the earlier one. Now, I'm starting to see problems. Can, can you look at this area? Can you see these? Okay, up here. Let's take a look what that is. I am not sure what that is. Now, wait a minute, can you see this? Some orange thing here, and they are, uh, with no doubt, that is my Teta cable, okay? If you look at, maybe, maybe here, okay? Can you see the Teta, cab teta cable there? Okay, this cable. Okay, it's orange, it's in the front, and because the, the perfume bottle is not a perfect flat surface, it's bending in a little bit so that when it bends in a little bit, it reflects what's on that side, on the camera right. So it's seeing the cable down there. That's what's happening with this shot, okay? But this is probably because that they, they also, the, the surface is not flat, it's bending in a little bit at the top, so that's why it's seeing the bottom also down here. And then this one is very interesting. This one, I, I'm not only seeing white, but I'm seeing a different color. Because the light from the surroundings is leaking in, which is affecting this shot. Now, one of the reasons why we use flash is that we can get higher power output 
easier. I'm not saying that it's easier, just that it's easier. Okay, because you, when the flash goes off, it's so powerful, just one stroke, and it is so powerful that it almost, in most occasions, particularly in a studio, the flashes are going to overpower all the lights that you are seeing in the surroundings of a studio because you, you don't have sunlight. Sunlight is really bright, but in, in a studio setup, flashes are going to overpower everything, okay? Uh, that is very important in, in situations in, in a studio uh, where that we don't want other lights to contaminate, contaminate the, the, the photo, okay? Uh, but when you're using continuous light, other continuous lights could be as powerful. So they would leak in easier, okay? You will be seeing a lot more other light sources. Like, like let's say if I get to the front of this product and take another shot, probably you are going to see me and my hands and I don't know, if I'm there, maybe you are going to see me. No, not yet. But uh, if there are light sources hitting me, maybe you are going to see that too. So that's why uh, using these products, you probably need to, in a uh, light control that al uh, area uh, uh, space, okay, it shouldn't be too bright, okay. Honestly, the, the LED in it is pretty bright, okay. It's really bright, you see. Comparing to the, the, the uh, fluorescent light that I'm having in my studio, it's really bright. So it's okay. But if you're putting this light box right beside a window and sunlight is coming in, you're going to run into problems. Okay, so that is another thing that you should bear in mind. Um, one last thing before I conclude today's uh, demonstration. Hold on. Let's see if uh, there is any uh, comment. Okay, we're good. Good, okay. Let's conclude this uh, by one final demonstration. Actually, this product comes with, it, it doesn't come with, you need to pay extra, okay, for this. Comes with two other LED strips, which are pretty handy. I think they are, they, they should be very useful. I can try doing this here now by plugging that in and uh, it's running with uh, like a magnetic setup which is very handy, I think. I, I like it a lot actually. We should have something like this with professional equipment. Hold on. Now the cables are difficult. Woo! Okay. Sorry, Dr. Hon. I dropped only the adapter. Okay, now I'm trying to put these here. Let's see if I can do it better. All right. All right. Okay, let's turn on these two lights. Okay. Okay, let, let's dim this down so that you know what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, as you can see that, here you have two strips of uh, LED lights. I'm putting them here, okay, which is pretty handy. They runs, uh, they, they runs on a magnetic stand, okay. There are magnets down here and there is a, a magnet down here. Okay, so it attaches, okay. And I can still control it, okay. Just the top light, okay. I can control the top light and the light strips so that I can create something different now, okay. Let's take a look at the live view and see what we have. It's pretty nice, okay? I, I'm not sure if you can see the effect. Now, this are the two light strips. Can you see that? Okay. All right. And uh, this, hold on, let me show you. I'm so sorry, I messed that up. Okay, now this is, Okay, this is everything off. Let me turn off the lights in the studio too, so that you have a better idea, okay? Now these, what you are seeing are the lights which are to, to illuminate me. I can try turning them off too, to make sure that uh, everybody is clear about 
what we are doing, okay? Now, this is my shadow, hello, can you see me? Now, I, as you can see in this frame, I'm in total darkness, okay? Can you see me, okay? It's so bright, uh, from the live view it is very bright because the, the camera is compensating, okay? Uh, it's uh, called, uh, uh, I don't know, the viewfinder mode or something, the, so that it, it is boosting the, the, the light up, but actually it is a really dark uh, uh, setting, okay? Let me turn up the light here. First of all, let me turn this up, okay? That's the top light, okay? Something like this, maybe, first of all, okay? As you can see that the light is also leaking in so that you can kind of start to see my face in the small frame, picture in picture, down at the uh, bottom right, okay? Now, let me try to bring in the two LED strips. Okay, can you see that? Can you see that? Here, these two strips are the two strips that I added, and also this, okay? And because the two strip lights are on the, basically on the floor, on the background paper, so the two strips are also illumin illuminating more the floor, okay? The white background paper. So that's why, if you take a look at this, you'll see like situations like this. You see, okay? Now, I think these two strips of LED lights are very helpful in a lot of, of situations. But the problem is, just like the three strips of LED lights at the top, you, you can't change it. Now, it is better with these two because you can move them around, you can, uh, you, you can even position them on the side, let me show you. Okay, because it's magnetic, you can actually put this light on the side, like this, okay? Though I'm not sure if this is going to help this particular photo, so, uh, but uh, it's pretty handy. But the problem for me as a professional photographer is that I, as a photographer, I control the, the light shape and light size a lot. That is what going to, what's going to help me to create the photo that I want to create. Now, when we say light size, it's actually the, the size of the light source in terms of the surface that we are seeing. Now, let's go back to the live view. And uh, this is the live view. And uh, at the, down here, I want to show you this angle so that you can see what I do and uh, how is it affecting the final result, okay? Oh, but before that, let me show you what am I having with me, okay? I'm having a piece of uh, semi-translucent diffusing material, okay? Uh, this is something that I brought from the UK. I shipped it from UK. Very good plastic material that I'm using. Uh, they are not tra transparent at all. It's like uh, the Nao Yao Ji, which you can get on, on, on a lot of stationary stores, okay? So let's get back to this angle, which is the live view, and this is the angle which you, you're going to see what I will be doing. I'm placing, I'm going to place this sheet of diffusion material in front of one of these two light source. Can you see the difference? Okay. Can you see that? Now, when I'm putting this here, when I try to manipulate the light source, I'm going to have different results that it really depends on. It's a matter of taste whether you like it or not, or which one you like better, okay? I can do a lot of things with it. When I have a, a piece of diffusion material like this, because then I can change the size and shape of my light source, if you know what I mean. Now, that is something that uh, I normally would, 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 
when people come here and, and when they want to learn about photography uh, and lighting with me, this is one of the things that I, I, I will show them. Uh, we will always, we, we always try to manipulate the size and shape of these lights to help us to create different sorts of lights and refractions on the product. And that is key to product photography. That is very, very important. One of the most important aspects in, in product photography, for me, at least for me, I don't know about the other photographers, but, but for me, controlling the refraction is one of the most, most, most important in product photography, okay? So by introducing these diffusion materials, you can actually manipulate the, the shape and size of the light, but also because the lights that we are using here are continuous lights, they are not very powerful. When you bring in these diffusion materials, they are going to eat some of the power out because the, the diffusion material is going to eat, take that and it take, take those energies, and, uh, which is sometimes problematic. But uh, in case you are using one of these products, I think you should consider go and get some LLT from the, the any stores that you can get them, or you can go anywhere, like go to a professional camera store and tell them that you want some diffusion materials. I think there are there are a number of big brands out there producing really good diffusion materials, like uh, namely Rosco. I'm using a lot of them. Uh, Savage, I'm using a lot of them, their the, the diffusion materials. Lee, I'm using a lot of their diffusion materials. So uh, yeah, uh, if you are using one of these uh, light bulbs and you need to take e-commerce shots or simple white background or black background shots, these are something that should come pretty handy. You should, you should get some of these, which would be very helpful in manipulating the, the light. I always dreamed of uh, creating one of these products to help people shooting good product photos, but uh, I, 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 I've given up that, that, that uh, idea because first of all, I know if I'm doing it, it would be a massive, big device which would not be perfect, but it would solve the problem of most of the people out there who want to take product photography easily at their own space, okay? They don't have to send their product to, to photographers. There, there, there are, I know that there are a number of reasons that why you don't send your products to a photographer. Probably, like, the first of all, you, you need to pay them, okay? Secondly, probably some products are not that easy to be transported to somewhere else, let's say jewelries. Like they are really expensive, you have insurance issues, things like that. But uh, I've given that idea up because I know that it's going to take me a lot of time and it is going to, <laughs> to ruin a lot of the, the, the photographer's life. But uh, then there you go. Uh, if you need really good e-commerce photo, first of all, you should I, I, I think that you should hire a professional photographer. Uh, but then, if you are uh, running your own business and you want to use one of these products, any of them, okay, there are a lot of them, uh, I, I think it is a good idea to consult a professional photographer and let them tell you how you can get a better result using these products. Once again, I don't hate these products. I think there are people, users out there, who want to just pay a few hundred bucks or a thousand bucks and they could create like normal, uh, good enough photo for their e-commerce use. But of course, I do know that there are like problems. If you really want professional level, good quality photos, you would always go to a professional photographer. And that's why we're here. We are not there to like, like I, I receive inquiries like not daily, but weekly. There would be someone coming in saying that, uh, uh, hey, we want some simple product shots. How much per shot? And I simply can't give them a, a quote because what do you mean by simple? If it is that simple, why don't you do it yourself? 
But for me, for us, professional photographers, when we are trying to provide professional services, we are providing the best we could. Like the watch photo that I showed you just now, okay? Is, uh, I would not say that it's a perfect photo, but uh, you can't get that photo from, from a device like this. No, there is no way. So it's okay if you are e-commerce business owner who want to do like simple product shots with a product like this, it's okay, go ahead, good for you. You get what you pay for and you get what you, you, you can do, okay? But we, back to us, professional photographers, what we should be doing is to make sure that we know our craft and we do better than these products. If you can only do photo shoots as good as what these people can do with a product like this, you are not good enough. You need to get better. You need to be able to get a shot which is, if not perfect, almost perfect, up to a professional standard that your clients are happy with. So, um, Honestly, I don't know why I'm doing this, this video. What triggers me was that advertisement, okay? Uh, uh, business owners, e-commerce uh, business owners, don't be fooled by those advertisements. You are not going to get a shot like that, just like a shot in that advertisement by getting one of these products, no. You need to know the stuff before you can get it. And honestly, you can't. Even I know the stuff, but with, a, with a, such a nice piece of equipment, I'm not going to get a shot like that in that advertisement. Let, let me grab you a bottle. Let me grab a bottle and try to take a shot and let's tell you what, what are we going to get. Uh, how about this? Okay. I have plenty bottles of wine in my studio just for the purpose of demonstrating. Okay, let's see if I get a, an okay shot. I probably need to move back a little bit because the bottle is a lot taller than those popping bottles and other things. Okay, I need to reframe a little bit. There you go, okay. Not too bad, but then I need to move this a little bit to the side. Okay, maybe something like this, hold on. Well, actually, this is not that easy to shoot a bottle in a tent like this, but bear with me. I just need some more time to set it up. Okay, there you go. All right, let's take a shot. Let's take a shot. Uh, I'm not sure about the exposure, probably we will be overexposing. Yes, we are. So uh, let's bring it down to here to get another shot. Still overexposed because we, we brought in two, two lights, okay. All right, there you go. This, okay, this is what I'm getting from this light tent, okay, using this light tent. You, you see now these two strips are the two uh, uh, the LED strips that I'm, I'm putting at the front. These three are the three strips at the top, okay? You, you remember there are three strips at the top. That's what you're seeing, but if I do this, okay, here, Let's see if it gets any better, okay? Probably, yeah, I, I, I got something different this time, okay? You have a, like a gradient, something, if I, if I can, well, it's not easy to manipulate a setup like this because you, you don't have a lot of space and uh, you can't control a lot of the elements, but uh, like, let's try, let's try. Okay, let's see. We have another shot, okay, like this, okay. 
the diffusion. And my hand, actually, can you see my hand? That's my hand. Anyway, so uh, yeah, even with these LED strips, uh, I'm running into problems because it is really difficult for me to manipulate these uh, strips. And uh, I, I don't have the time to, to do another demonstration here for what I will be doing to shoot a bottle like this. But uh, for people who, who are interested, I actually did another live in Cantonese a few weeks ago talking about uh, taking a photo of a bottle on a white background, probably. I have forgotten if I took it on, on a white background. But uh, I think that is something worth looking at because that is going to tell you a lot about how am I going to approach a uh, uh, product photo like this if I, I got a job like this. But uh, there you go. That is uh, my live demonstration today. I hope uh, you find something useful, useful in it. And uh, if you know that you have friends who are running an e-commerce business, uh, please forward these uh, uh, video to them so that they, they know a little bit more about the, these light tents, okay? Particularly when they are considering buying one or particularly when they are considering whether they should hire a professional photographer or shoot it in their own studio. And uh, if you are a, a staff or a company and you are being asked to do this job, which is to shoot with these light tents, uh, I, I think this video would be helpful too. So if you know that your friend is being forced to, to pick up this position in their company, maybe this video would be helpful so that they know what's happening and, and what to do with, with uh, situations like these. Uh, and uh, after all, uh, after spending like almost, uh, I think it's almost an hour, is it? Let me take a look. I think it is almost an, an hour now. Uh, uh, we are talking about only white background. We didn't even go into black background or, or anything else or more refractive or even like, like a, a I don't know, juries, watches, what, what is going to happen. I, I don't have the time to go into those yet. But in case you are running into situations that you, you, you are shooting juries, watches, and things like that, you are going to run into bigger troubles. You are going to run into bigger problems, more difficult situations. So yeah, in those situations, please, go and find a, a professional photographer. I think that that would help you a lot uh, instead of uh, trying to shoot it with one of these light tents. Okay, that's it. That, that's it. That's all for today. Thank you very much. I hope these are helpful and uh, yeah, please share it around. Thank you. See you next time.